So we are now discussing question number two of paper one of physics of J Advanced 2022. Now this question says that the minimum kinetic energy needed to initiate this reaction will be how much? Okay, so let's uh, first write down the given information. So the given reaction, the given reaction uh, is this. Okay, I'll just write it down. Uh, so 16N7 plus uh, an alpha particle. This gives us 1H1 plus 19O8. So this is the reaction that we want to undertake. And the masses are given to be this, 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 and this, uh, respectively for these four entities. They are in the same order. They are written in the same order as they are written in the reaction. Okay, so the first step that we are going to do, we are going to calculate the Q value of this reaction. Okay, so Q value is indicates the energy released in the reaction. So that is written as mass defect into C square. And mass defect will be written as mass of reactants, mass of reactants, minus mass of product okay uh, into c square so when we do this mass of reactants becomes uh, the sum of these two values so that is 20 point this is 20.009 minus the sum of products so mass of sum of these two this becomes 20.011 okay so this basically means that the mass defect is negative it's coming out to be minus 0.002 mu uh, amu that is into c square so this turns out to be minus 0.002 into the question says that we have to use 1 amu as 930 mev by c square so i'll multiply this number with 930 and this is the energy that we are going to get in mevs and this value turns out to be minus 1.86 mevs now a negative q value basically means that to initiate this reaction or to carry out this reaction we need to provide this much energy all right and in this particular question how are we providing this kinetic energy how are we providing this energy we are providing this energy in the form of kinetic energy all right now the thing to keep in mind is many students may believe that this is the energy that alpha particle must possess but that is not true because in a collision situation uh, there is a limit to the amount of loss of kinetic energy that can take place. It is not necessary that all the energy possessed by a particle uh, can get converted into loss because that would mean that the final motion is not taking place. Nothing is moving eventually, which would mean that the final momentum is zero, even though the initial momentum was not zero. So it will lead to a violation of conservation of momentum. So if we are sending a, a particle with some energy to strike a target, Okay, then there must be some value of final kinetic energy so that momentum conservation may be obeyed. Now, this energy, I'll first mention this particular thing, the, this particular concept. Let's say there is a striker of mass M1 which is heading towards a target of mass M2 with a velocity of V0. Okay, in this situation, the maximum loss takes place when they these two start moving together. That is, they do not separate and they start moving together with some final velocity which can be easily found out by using the momentum conservation. But right now we are not interested in this velocity. We are interested in writing the loss in kinetic energy. So in this scenario, maximum loss takes place and that loss in kinetic energy is given by half into M1, M2 upon M1 plus M2 into V0 minus zero square. So this is the maximum loss that can take place. And it is this loss which will be absorbed by the nucleus to carry out the reaction. So it is this loss which should be equal to mod Q so that the reaction can take place. So this is the concept behind this question. Let's now put the values. So M1 will represent the mass of alpha particle. So let me write as 4 AMU here. And M2 will represent the mass of the uh, nitrogen nucleus. Okay, now keep in mind that here we are not, uh, like here we can ignore the decimal values of the masses uh, because this, this value, this particular value will not change significantly even if we discard that. While calculating mass defect, we cannot discard those values because the mass defect is so tiny. In fact, it is the difference in the decimal values that plays a role. Okay, so here I'm going to write it as 16 AMU and then here I'm going to write it as 20 AMU and then into V square should be equal to mod Q. So this becomes equal to what? This becomes equal to half into 4 mu. Let's just separate out this ratio. Okay, this ratio, this ratio is what? 4 by 5. I'll write it towards the end. 
सो हाफ इंटू फोर म्यू इंटू वी नॉट स्क्वायर इंटू फोर बाय फाइव इज इक्वल टू मॉड यू नाउ Why have I written this and this separately? Because this represents what? This is basically the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. So I can write kinetic energy of alpha particle into four by five should be equals to mod u, which basically means that uh, which basically means that k alpha is five times of mod u upon four. So that is five by four times of one point eight six. I think the uh, q value was coming out to be this much only one point eight six. Yes. And when you do this calculation, when you finish the calculation, the value that you get is 2.325. Now we have to truncate this number to two value of decimal places, uh, two decimal places. So uh, it is going to become 2.32. You can assume that we have truncated this number, or even if you don't think that that we have truncated this number, then also since this is a, an even number, so whenever an even number has five written to the next of it, and there are no numbers beyond that, and we need to round it off to this particular decimal value. Then even number is left. It is if it uh, if it would have been an odd number, we would have increased that odd number by one. So the answer to this question would be two point three two. I hope you enjoyed the solution, guys. I hope you understood everything and you like the solution. Thank you.